Hello students, Jinali Shah welcomes you on behalf of Saraswat International Academy. Today we will begin with the next part of our chapter Biological Classification. We know Whittaker classified organisms into five kingdoms. Those are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. We have already studied in detail the first two kingdoms. The first was Monera which included the prokaryotic unicellular organisms and the next one was the protista which included the eukaryotic unicellular organisms. Today we will study in detail the next kingdom and that kingdom is of the fungi. So which organisms are included in the kingdom fungi? It is a kingdom of the heterotrophic organisms. Heterotrophic which means they cannot prepare their own food because they are devoid of the chlorophyll pigment. Now this fungi they show diversity in morphology and habitat. That is they have different forms and they are found in variety of habitat. They are cosmopolitan that is they occur almost everywhere. They are found in air, they are found in water, they are found in soil. They are also found on other plants as well as on the animals. Normally fungi they grow in the warm and humid places. So that is the most important requirement for the growth of the fungi. They require the warm and humid places. Certain examples of fungi. We know that bread when kept for many days it develops the fungi. And the name of the fungi developed is the mold. Certain fruits and vegetables when kept for many days. They also rot and that rots are due to the fungi. So example the orange rots are basically because of the fungi. There are certain fungi which are edible. The most common edible fungi is the mushroom. And toadstool which is also the form of the fungi. But they, uh, which is also the form of the mushroom. But it is which type of mushroom? Inedible mushroom. So this is certain examples of the fungi. Other examples, the white spots which are developed on the mustard seeds are due to the parasitic fungi. Some fungi are unicellular, say for example yeast. So yeast is an example of the unicellular fungi. The scientific name of yeast is Saccharomyces. And this yeast is used in the preparation of the bread as well as in the preparation of the beer. So, as Saccharomyces is used in the preparation of bread, this Saccharomyces is called as the brew, uh, baker's yeast. As Saccharomyces is also used in the preparation of the beer, it is also called as the brewer's yeast. So, Saccharomyces, it is also called as the baker's yeast because it is used in the preparation of the bread. And it is also called as brewer's yeast because it is used in the preparation of beer. There are certain fungi which causes diseases in plants as well as in animals. Example, the name of the fungi is Puccinia and it causes the rust in the wheat. There are certain fungi which are very good source of antibiotics. The most common of them is the penicillium. So that was the general introduction regarding the fungi. Here you can see two different types of fungi. The first one is the yeast which is the unicellular fungi and the next one is the mold which is the multicellular fungi. These are the uh, figures of the uh, fungi. This is penicillium and this is the puccinia. Now most of the fungi are filamentous. So almost all fungi are filamentous. Exception is the yeast. And yeast is which type of fungi? As I told you earlier, it is an unicellular fungi. So with the exception of yeast which is unicellular, most of the fungi are filamentous. Now when we talk about the body of the fungi, so the body of the fungi, it consists of long slender thread like filaments and this thread like filamentous structure present in the body of the fungi is called as hyphae and the network of hyphae or you can say the group of the hyphae forms the mycelium. 
so body of the fungi is made up of the filamentous thread like structure which are called as hyphae and the network of hyphae is called as mycelium now when we talk about hyphae some of the hyphae they are like the continuous tubes which are filled with the multinucleated cytoplasm this type of hyphae are called as coenocytic or aseptate or non septate hyphae whereas the others have the septa or you can say cross wall or partitions in their hyphae and such type of hyphae are called as the septate hyphae so based on the type of hyphae there are two types one is the coenocytic hyphae where the hyphae does not have any partitions they are the continuous tubes which contains the multinucleated cytoplasm whereas in others hyphae they have the partitions or you can say cross walls or septa and within each septa there is only single nucleus such hyphae are called as the septet hyphae now when we talk about the cell wall of the fungi it is made up of the chemical called as chitin which is commonly called as the fungal cellulose which is totally different from the cellulosic cell wall found in the plants so and it also contains the polysaccharides which are nothing but the sugars so the cell wall of the fungi are made up of chitin commonly called as fungal cellulose as well as it contains polysaccharides so here you can see the diagram of the fungi so this is the hyphae these all filamentous structures are called as <coughs> hyphae and the group of the hyphae is called as the mycelium now as i told you the hyphae are of two type so this one is the septate hyphae and this one is the coenocytic hyphae so what is septate hyphae so here you can see there are septum or you can say cross wall present and due to that the hyphae is divided into compartment and each compartment consists of only single nuclei whereas in the coenocytic hyphae you can see that it is continuous there are no cross walls and so it is like a continuous tube which consists of the multi nucleated cytoplasm so there are two types of the hyphae septate hyphae with the cross walls or partitions or septum between them and coenocytic hyphae where it is like a continuous tube filled with the multi nucleated cytoplasm now when we talk about the types of the fungi on the basis of source of food so there are two types of fungi one is the saprophytic fungi and another one is the parasitic fungi so what are saprophytic fungi so they are the fungi which absorbs the organic matter from the dead substrate so basically we can say that they depend on their food require for their food requirements on the dead organic matter now from where do they obtain this dead organic matter so this dead organic matter can be the material like bread they may be rottening fruits they may be rottening vegetables as well as they may be the dung of the animals you might have seen the cow dung and in some cow dungs you might have seen the whitish outgrowth on their surface they are nothing but they are the fungi so saprophytic fungi are those fungi which depend for their food material on the dead substrates that dead substrates may be the bread rotten fruits and vegetables as well as the dungs of the animal now there are other type of the fungi called as the parasitic fungi so what are they so they are the fungi which obtain the food from the living organisms from other living organisms like plants animals as well as the human beings so those fungi which obtain their food from other living organisms like plants animals and human beings are called as the parasitic fungi now there are certain fungi that live as the symbiote symbionts what do you mean by the symbiosis we know that it is a mutualistic relationship between 
the two organisms where two organisms are benefited by each other's presence such association is known as the symbiotic association so the fungi can live with the symbiotic association with algae and that is called as the lichens so what are lichens the symbiotic association between algae and fungi here both of the organisms that is algae as well as fungi in lichens both algae and fungi are uh, benefited by each other's presence and another symbiotic association is between the fungi and the roots of the higher plants and that symbiotic association is called as mycorrhiza so here roots of the higher plants as well as fungi both are benefited by each other's presence so fungi can also be found as the symbionts with association with other organisms so such symbiotic association of fungi with algae is called as lichens and that of fungi with the roots of higher plants is called as the mycorrhiza now the next one is how the reproduction occurs in fungi so fungi can reproduce in three different ways one is the vegetative reproduction second one is the asexual reproduction and the last one is the sexual reproduction so these are the three ways of the reproduction in fungi so first of all vegetative reproduction this vegetative reproduction occurs by three methods fragmentation fission as well as the budding whereas the asexual reproduction occurs by the spores called as conidia or sporangiospores or zoospores as well as the sexual reproduction occurs by oospores ascospores as well as the pseudospores now where are these spores produced the spores are produced on the structures which are called as the fruiting bodies so spores are produced on the distinct structures which are called as the fruiting bodies now we will study each and every method of reproduction in detail so first of all the vegetative reproduction so vegetative reproduction occurs by three ways one was fragmentation second was the fission and the last one was budding so first of all the fragmentation the name itself suggests fragment that is to break into pieces so here the mycelium it breaks into small pieces and now these pieces they form the new fungal filament and start working as a normal filament so here you can see this is a normal vegetative cell a normal fungal mycelium now this fungal mycelium here it is fragmented into different pieces it have been broken into the several small pieces now you can see each uh, fragment it develops a new fungal uh, mycelium so that is called as the vegetative reproduction basically this is the method of reproduction in the fungus which is called as the mucor the next method of the vegetative reproduction is budding so what happens so basically a small bud will be developed as an outgrowth on the parent body okay now later the nucleus of the parent cell it is separated into the two parts one of the nuclei it shifts into the bud so first of all the outgrowth will be formed that outgrowth is called as a bud later the nuclei it gets separated into two part one part of it will remain into the parent cell and other part of the nucleus will move into the bud now this buds created divides and finally it forms a new cell so here you can see this is a parent cell okay now here the bud is formed this outgrowth is called as bud the nuclei have separated some part of the nuclei is in the bud and some part of it is in the parent cell now then later on this cytoplasmic division occurs and these are the formation of the parent uh, daughter yeast cells okay so basically budding is a method of reproduction in the yeast now the next one is the fission 
So basically fission is nothing but the mitosis process, mitotic cell division occurs in the dividing cell. So here you can see this is a parent cell. Now this parent cell it have been divided. So this is a division. Later the cell wall is formed between the two cells and then the two cells get separated. So basically a simple mitotic division occurs at the time of the fission. Now where this fission will occur? So basically fission occurs in the yeast which is called as the schizosaccharomyces. It is another form of the yeast called as the schizosaccharomyces. Here you can see uh, there are two yeast. One is dividing by the process called as the fission and another is dividing by the process called as the budding. So, here this is a fission and the yeast which undergoes fission is called as the schizosaccharomyces. Here you can see that the two cells are divided whereas the budding yeast are called as the saccharomyces where the outgrowth is formed which is called as an bud which later detaches from the parent body. Now the next method of the reproduction is the asexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction occurs by the formation of the different kinds of spores. So one of the spores is the sporangiospores. So basically this is the main fungal which is having the mycelium. This mycelium have the sporangiophore whose tip uh, develops a structure called as sporangium. And within this sporangium the structures developed are called as the sporangiospores. This wall of the sporangium burst and water liberated sporangiospores. The sporangiospores on germination forms a mycelium and which finally forms a complete fungal body. The next way is by the development of the conidia. Same thing occur. This is the main fungal body. Here the filament is the conidiophores whose tip bears the group of the spores which are called as the conidia. These conidia are liberated into the atmosphere which when gets the favorable condition gets germinated form the mycelium and this mycelium will again form the new fungal body. So that is the asexual reproduction through the conidia. Now the last method of the reproduction is the sexual reproduction. Now students we should be very careful when we talk about the sexual reproduction. The sexual cycle basically involves the three stages. One is plasmogamy, another one is karyogamy and the last one is meiosis. So the process of sexual reproduction occurs in three stages, plasmogamy, karyogamy and meiosis. So first of all plasmogamy. So the first stage of the sexual reproduction is the plasmogamy. Here the two gametes they will fuse with each other but only their protoplasm will fuse, their nuclei does not fuse. Students keep in mind during the first stage of the sexual reproduction in fungi there is only the fusion of the protoplasm of the two gametes. Their nuclei does not fuse. So due to this reason what will be formed? A single cell with the two nuclei will be formed. This condition is a binucleated. Bi means two nuclei that is two nuclei. Or dikaryotic, di means to carry on, it means nucleus. So this stage where a single cell possesses the two nucleus is called as a dikaryon. Di means to carry on means nucleus. So a single cell with the two nucleus. So that is the first stage. Then the second one is the karyogamy. Karyo it means nucleus, gamy means fusion. So now the nuclei they will fuse. In the first step only the protoplasm of the two cells were fused. In the next stage the nuclei also fuses. So the nuclei they pre which are present in the cell they will fuse with each other and it forms a diploid nucleus and this stage is called as the syncarion. Syn means fuse 
and carrion it means nuclei. So the fusion of the two nuclei. So that is the second stage that is called as the karyogamy. And the last one is the meiosis. So what happens during meiosis? We know you have already studied in the lower standards the process of meiosis. Meiosis is a type of cell division which is a reductional division where the chromosome number reduces to half. And each meiotic re, uh, division results into the formation of the four cells. So now, due to karyogamy, diploid nucleus is formed. And now this diploid nucleus undergoes meiotic division, which results in the formation of the haploid cells. So that is the process of sexual reproduction. Three stages, plasmogamy, karyogamy and meiosis. What is plasmogamy? So, first stage where the gametes will fuse, their protoplasm will fuse but their nuclei does not fuse. So, a single cell with the two nucleus are formed. That stage is called as the dikaryon. The second phase is karyogamy where uh, the fusion of the nuclei take place resulting into the formation of the diploid nucleus. That condition is called as the syncaryon. And finally, the last stage is meiosis where a cell with a diploid nucleus undergoes the meiotic division resulting into the formation of the haploid cells. Now, when the fungus reproduces sexually, what happens? So, two haploid hyphae of the compatible mating type. So, that is those two hyphae which belongs to the same species, they will come together and they will fuse. Now, we know that the sexual reproduction is divided into three stages, plasmogamy, karyogamy and meiosis. So, in a group of fungi which is called as the phycomycetes. So, in the phycomycetes, the fusion of the two haploid cell immediately forms a diploid cell. So, here... Plasmogamy and karyogamy they occur together. So in phycomycetes directly the fusion of a cell results in the formation of a diploid cell. Whereas in other fungi like ascomycetes as well as the basidiomycetes. In this two group of fungi what happens? There is an intervening prolonged gap which is called as a dikaryotic stage. That is N plus N, two nuclei per cell occurs. So, there is a gap between a plasmogamy and karyogamy. And this condition is called as dikaryon, as I explained you earlier. So, in phycomycetes, what happens? The plasmogamy is immediately followed by karyogamy. So, immediately a diploid nucleus, diploid cell will be formed. Whereas, in ascomycetes and basidiomycetes, Plasmogamy and karyogamy, between them there is a long gap. So, in between them there is a stage form which is called as a dikaryon where a single cell consists of the two nucleus and that phase is called as the dikaryophase. What is dikaryophase? A phase where a condition called as dikaryon is prevalent. What is dikaryon? So, it is an intervening dikaryotic stage where the cell consists of the two nuclei. Now, later this nuclei will fuse and the cells will become diploid. This diploid fungi, they form the fruiting bodies in which there will be the reduction division resulting into the formation of the haploid spores. So, that is regarding the sexual reproduction in the fungi. So, here you can see the process of the sexual reproduction. So, basically these are the two compatible hyphae and they undergoes the plasmogamy. Here you can say that there is a single cell which consists of two nuclei. This condition is called as the dikaryon. After that there is karyogamy that is fusion of nuclei. These two nuclei fuse. The form structure is called as syncaryon, which is a diploid structure. Now, this syncaryon, it undergoes meiosis 
and it results in the formation of the four haploid spores. So, that is the process of the sexual reproduction occurring in the fungi. Now, the next part is the classification of the fungi. So, on what basis the fungi are classified? So, fungi are classified on the basis of the morphology of mycelium, the mode of the spore formation and the fruiting bodies structure that results into the division of the fungi into the various classes. So, what are the basis of the fungal classification? Morphology of the mycelium, mode of spore formation and fruiting bodies. So, based on this, the fungi are divided into four different classes. The first class is phycomycetes, then is ascomycetes, the next is basidiomycetes and last one is the deuteromycetes. So, now we will study each and every fungal class into detail. So, the first class of the fungi is the phycomycetes. These phycomycetes are also called as the lower fungi or also they are called as the algal fungi. Now, where are these fungi found? So, basically they are found in the aquatic habitats. They may be also found on the decaying wood in moist or damp places or they may be found as obligate parasites on the plants. So, they are found in aquatic habitats, decaying wood in moist and damp places as well as some of them are obligate parasites on the plants. Here the septate, uh, when we talk about mycelium, it is aseptate and coenocytic. It means there is no cross walls in their mycelium. How the asexual reproduction takes place? So, it takes place by the zoospores. Now, basically two types of spores are mentioned here. One is zoospores and another one is the aplanospores. So, basically zoospores and aplanospores are the types of the sporangiospores only. We have studied in the uh, 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 earlier that the asexual reproduction occurs by sporangiospores. These sporangiospores are of two types, zoospores. Those sporangiospores which have flagella, they are called as the zoospores. And those sporangiospores which are devoid of flagella, they are called as aplanospores. So, asexual reproduction occurs by zoospores which are motile by flagella or by the aplanospores which are non-motile because they are devoid of the flagella. Now, where are these spores produced? So, spores are produced endogenously. Endogenously means inside. So, they are produced inside what? So, they are produced inside a structure which is called as the sporangium. Already we have studied in the late earlier that what is a sporangium. Now, how the sexual reproduction occurs? So, by the fusion of the two gametes, the structure produced are called as the zygospores. Now, here the gametes may be similar in morphology. So, the fusing gametes, they may be Similar in morphology, that is their shape and size are almost same. So, such gametes where the morphology are similar, which are morphologically identical, such gametes are called as, that condition is called as isogamous condition. And those gametes which are dissimilar in morphology, that is their size, their shape, their forms, they are different. Such condition is called as anisogamous or oogamous. Aniso, it means unequal. So, basically the gametes, fusing gametes, they may be similar in morphology. That condition is called as isogamous condition or they may be dissimilar in morphology. That condition is called as anisogamous or oogamous. When we talk particularly regarding oogamous, in oogamous condition, the male gamete is the smaller in size and it will be normally motile and the female gamete will be larger in size and it will be the non-motile structure. Now, some common examples of phycomycetes are mucor, 
then the rhizopus which is found on the bread and albugo which is the parasitic fungi on the mustard so here these are the different structures this is the structure of the mucor this is the structure of the rhizospores and this is the structure of the albugo so <coughs> these are the sporangiospores within uh, uh, these are the sporangiospores which are produced in the structure which are called as the sporangia same way here also this is the sporangium inside which the spores are developed which when liberated forms the new fungi so that is regarding the uh, fungi so, mucor rhizopus and albugo now the next group of the fungi is the ascomycetes or also it is called as the sac fungi so which uh, these ascomycetes are commonly called as the sac fungi and they are mostly multicellular and most common example is penicillium rarely it consists of the unicellular fungi and here the example is yeast commonly uh, whose scientific name is saccharomyces so ascomycetes are mostly the multicellular fungi with the exception of the yeast which is unicellular now they are saprophytic which means they are found on the dead end decay of the organisms decomposers which decompose the uh, organic material parasitic which are found on the other animals or they are coprophilous very important that is they are the fungi which grow on the dung of the animals so these fungi are saprophytic or they may be decomposers or parasitic or they may be coprophilous here the mycelium is branched and septate septate mycelium we know it means it have the uh, cross walls between them the asexual spores are called as the conidia now this conidia are formed exogenously outside exogenously it means outside and they are produced in the mycelium which are called as the conidiophores so conidiophores externally produces the conidia and this conidia on germination develops the mycelium here the sexual spores are called as the ascospores and these ascospores are produced endogenously in a sac like structure which is called as asci very important student you need to remember that asexual spores are produced exogenously on the conidiophores whereas the sex sexual spores which are called as ascospores they are developed endogenously and endogenously means inside into a sac like structure and that sac like structure is called as asci and as asci is formed they are called as ascomycetes and as asci is a sac like structure they are called as the sac fungi so now where are these asci developed so these asci are arranged in the different types of the fruiting bodies and these are called as ascocarps so asci are present on the fruiting bodies which are called as the ascocarps certain common examples of this group of fungi are aspergillus claviceps and neurospora neurospora is used in the biochemical and genetic work normally to study the genetics basically to study genetics and certain biochemical reactions normally neurospora are used many members like morels and truffles are edible and they are considered as the delicacies so these are the certain diagram this is aspergillus this is claviceps and this is the neurospora now the next group of fungi is basidiomyces which are commonly called as the club fungi so basically they occur in the forms like mushrooms bracket fungi or puff balls they grow in the soil or on the logs and on the tree stems what are tree stems so part of the tree that remains in the ground after the tree has been cut down 
So, it is that part of the tree, certain part of the tree remains in the ground after it has been cut down. So, that are called as the tree stems. So, they may grow in soil, they may grow on logs, they may grow on the tree stems as well as they may be found as the parasite in the plant bodies. Examples of the parasitic mycetes are the rusts as well as the smuts. Here the mycelium is branched as well as it is septate that is it will have the partitions or cloth walls or the septum. Here the asexual spores are not found. So, asexual reproduction does not take place but the vegetative reproduction occurs commonly by the method of fragmentation. So, asexual reproduction through spores is not possible but vegetative reproduction by fragmentation is most common method of reproduction in basidiomycetes. Now, here the sex organs are absent but still they will undergo the process of sexual reproduction. So, how that occurs? So, plasmogamy here is brought by the fusion of the two vegetative or somatic cells of the different strains or genotypes. So, basically strains or genotypes means different subspecies. You can say different subspecies of the fungi. So, those fungi which are undergoing the sexual reproduction so, here the plasmogamy occurs by the fusion of the vegetative or the somatic cells. The resultant structure formed is the dikaryotic. Dikaryotic means uh, it will contain a single cell with the two nuclei. And this dikaryotic stage gives rise to a structure which is called as the basidium. Now, what happens inside this basidium? So, after plasmogamy inside the basidium, karyogamy will take place which results in the formation of the syncarion and later meiosis will take place inside the basidium which results in the formation of the four basidiospores. So, how sexual reproduction occur? They do not have the spatial sex organs but plasmogamy occurs by the fusion of the two vegetative or the somatic cells. The structure resulting structure formed is called as the dikaryotic and this dikaryon give rise to the basidium. Now inside this basidium karyogamy will occur which results in the fusion of the nuclei resulting in the formation of syncarion. And in this syncarion a meiosis will take place again in the basidium and it results in the formation of the four basidiospores. Now, these basidiospores are produced exogenously. Students, the comparison between the different groups of fungi is very, very, very important. In the last group, ascomycetes, you have seen that ascospores were produced endogenously, whereas here the basidiospores, they are produced exogenously on the basidium. Now, this basidium, they are arranged on the fruiting bodies which are called as the basidio carps. The examples, common examples are agaricus which is commonly called as the mushroom, eustilago which is a smut and puscinia which is a rust fungus. So, here you can see the diagram. This is the agaricus, the common mushroom which we eat. This is eustilago which is the smut fungus and the puscinia, the rust fungus. Now, the last group of the fungi is the deuteromycetes or fungi imperfecti. Now, why are they called as imperfect fungi? They are called as imperfect fungi because only the asexual or vegetative reproduction occurs in this fungi. The perfect stage or the sexual reproduction is absent. So, they are called as imperfect fungi because of the absence of the perfect stage or the sexual reproduction in them. They only reproduce by the asexual or vegetative method. When the sexual forms are discovered in this fungi, they are removed from this particular group or they are removed from these classes and then they are moved to the classes they rightly belong to. 
so basically if a sexual reproduction is found in this group of fungi then they will be removed from the deuteromycetes and they will be either uh, moved into the ascomycetes or basidiomycetes now it is possible that the asexual and vegetative stages have been given one name and placed under deuteromycetes and sexual stage another and they may be placed in the another case so what does it means asexual and vegetative phase if they are found then they were given the name deuteromycetes and the sexual stage if found they will be grouped into the another classes later linkages were established the fungi were correctly identified and moved out of the deuteromycetes very important so when the linkages were established this fungi were removed from the deuteromycetes and were added to the correct classes so once the perfect stages of the fungi have been found once we obtain the perfect stages or you can say once the perfect or sexual stages are developed in the fungi or in the members of the deuteromycetes they were often moved to ascomycetes or to the basidiomycetes now this deuteromycetes reproduce only by the asexual spores which are known as the conidia they never reproduce by the sexual method if the sexual method of reproduction is found in them they will be moved out of the deuteromycetes and will be entered either into ascomycetes or into the basidiomycetes here the mycelium is septate and branched that is they will have the cross walls some members are saprophytes or parasites basically saprophytes dead and decay parasites which live on other plants and animals but most of them are decomposers of litter so basically litter basically fallen leaves and dung of the animals and all those structure litter is fallen uh, twigs of the trees leaves of the trees fruits of the trees all those material is litter so they grow on them and as they are the decomposers they will play the important role in the cycling of the nutrients or minerals some common examples are alternaria coletotrichum and trichoderma so here you will see the diagram this is the uh, this is the alternaria this is the coletotrichum and this is the trichoderma so here we come to the end of our kingdom the fungi thank you students